briefly uh, how to get to um, a lovely outcome for your fall. So welcome, Natasha, and I'll give the word to you. Thank you very much, Katya. Hopefully everyone can see that and can hear me okay. So as Katya said, I'm just going to discuss about diarrhea in foals. So we're just going to cover the main causes of diarrhea, diagnosis, treatment, and when does a foal need hospitalisation and potential outcomes um, for the foal as well. So 50% of foals in their first six months of life will have an episode of diarrhea um, and most of these would be pretty unexciting and pretty transient as well um, so not anything to worry about however we do see um, some causes of diarrhea in foals that um, could be life-threatening. Accurate diagnosis is very important I'm going to discuss that further and there's quite I think with everything with foals um, rapid deterioration can often happen with severe diarrhea so it's something we do need to monitor closely and act on and it can also lead to one of the major causes of mortality in our neonatal foals which is sepsis or infection of the blood. So I think we're all very aware of biosecurity after the last year that we've all experienced, but I think it's one to remind us that if we have a foal that does develop diarrhea, we should really separate them from other mares and foals to avoid transmission of disease across the, across the group. Implementing biosecurity, and by that I mean putting a foot dip with disinfectant outside the stable, wearing gloves when you're handling that foal, and also using separate equipment wherever you can, especially thermometers and, and things that are going to be intimately involved with the foal. If there is a contagious cause identified, then we'd um, obviously usually advise about isolation and give you more specific ideas about what you might need to do with your stables and how to keep them away. Salmonella can cause severe disease in humans, especially the young and old. So it's something that can, we could get from the foals with diarrhea. Um, so do be careful and make sure that you're, you're following your biosecurity. And really the transmission route for most of these things is, is from the feces in an oral route. So making sure you're not putting your hands in your mouth or having a sandwich just after you've handled your foal with diarrhea without washing your hands. For mares that are about to foal, ensuring the udder and the back legs are clean just prior to foaling can reduce the foal intake of bacteria and is something that can be quite easily done and obviously tying up the tail and keeping everything as clean as possible. And cleaning and disinfecting your foaming boxes between mares is, it should be routine practice but it's something you should definitely be doing. Huge amounts of causes of diarrhea in foals and I'm not going to go um, through all of them um, but um, I will cover some of them and probably the most important ones but um, bacteria, parasites, um, different diets, um, foal heat, um, gastric ulcers can be one and also viruses and then there are some protozoa as well. So this is my little shades of diarrhea, um, starting from your kind of yellow, more kind of normal milk consistency diarrhea through to the lovely brown shades in the middle and then something that should be ultimately concerning for everyone if they see that on the floor of their stable, which is hemorrhagic diarrhea. Um, I would say that generally any sign of hemorrhagic diarrhea is a true emergency in a neonatal foal or even any of our animals really. So if you're seeing that, that's something to be getting on the phone at ASAP. Um, the other two are definitely ones that we're gonna discuss and talk about, but just to be aware that diarrhea does come in different consistencies and uh, shades. So the, probably the most common one that we all come across is foal heat diarrhea. And actually we now realize it's actually nothing to do with the mare coming into her first um, Easter cycle after foaling. Um, Cause we, if we have foals that are orphan or fed on milk replacer, they also develop this kind of transient diarrhea. And we understand now by looking at the microbiome that actually it's the developing gut and the change in the bacteria in the foal's gut that cause this transient diarrhea. What's most important is these foals usually remain very bright, they're nursing well, they're um, up and about and they're moving about. They don't really show any signs of concern about the diarrhea they're seeing. And generally this diarrhea is, is more of the yellow variety. Um, it can be a little bit liquid, but more on the kind of um, thin pasty side than anything too um, voluminous. Usually we see this between age uh, five and 15 days. And the majority of these cases would not require any treatment at all and they'll resolve on their own shouldn't be too concerning. Rotavirus, now this is a virus um, that destroys the absorptive surface of the small intestine and can cause pretty profuse foul smelling diarrhea. It's something that actually affects humans and actually been quite a 
major cause of mortality in infants, especially in the developing world. Um, if you've got any children, you know that they get a rotavirus vaccine as one of their first few vaccines, which is actually given orally. Um, and it's the same situation with our foals as well. So this um, virus is found in the environment um, and ingested orally um, into the intestinal tract, causing the problems. It's very contagious, and um, so will easily spread through a group of foals, hence the biosecurity requirements, um, and generally affects the foals between naught to four months of age. And helpfully, infected foals can shed for up to 10 days post-resolution of their diarrhea. So you have to be a bit careful about these foals if they have had a diagnosis of rotavirus, popping them back in with your other foals a little bit too early and then having some other problems. I'm going to discuss treatments further later in the talk, but there's no specific treatment, but we're just going to give supportive treatment to these foals. There is, however, a vaccination that's available for mares during pregnancy, um, given in the later stages, um, three vaccines a month apart. And that can really help reduce the problems, especially on um, farms where we're seeing big outbreaks of rotavirus. There is not a vaccine available that has been effective to be given to foals after birth. So you do need to think about this before you're, you're foaling down. And this is the um, virus here in the, in the image, and that's an electron microscopy. And it's called rotavirus because it's meant to look like a wheel um, under the microscope. The bacteria that we see and can cause major problems are the clostridial bacteria and their clostridium perfringes and difficile. And clostridium perfringes is the one we think about the most when we see the hemorrhagic diarrhea. And often foals can actually be found dead. Um, and this is the cause of that. So it can happen very, very quickly. And if you're seeing that, we really do need to act very speedily to try and save foals' lives. And they can often be very sick very quickly. Clostridium difficile is a bacteria that we can actually see after antibiotic use. So we're always a bit cautious about using antibiotics for many reasons, especially in our neonates. Um, but this is one of the reasons because um, getting Clostridium difficile um, diarrhea can also be very life-threatening and really difficult for us to treat. We often use metronide as well, um, an, an antibiotic uh, for a specific treatment of Clostridium um, and biosponge, which some of you may have come across, which has been shown to um, neutralize the toxins that these bacteria cause in the gut. Salmonella, so that's the one I mentioned earlier that can affect um, humans and um, our horses as well. And it can affect all ages of foals and it can actually affect our adult horses as well. It's a gram negative bacteria and it's pretty nasty um, often causing quite severe disease and making foals and us very sick. And the problem with salmonella is that we might be able to solve the diarrhea, but often they then get secondary problems such as infections in their jugular veins that can damage their kidneys um, and cause other things as well. And as I mentioned, it's a zoonosis, which means that it can transmit from, from our foals to us causing us problems. There are some other bacteria that I'm not going to cover um, today, um, and that includes Rhodococcus, which is one that we don't necessarily think about causing diarrhea, but can do, and um, often think about causing pneumonia, and Lawsonia intracellularis, which generally affects our older foals so around the weaning age. And we can also see E. coli, Actinobacillus, and Campylobacter as well. One thing that can happen relatively commonly is a dietary induced diarrhea, um, and that can be from errors in feeding, um, such as feeding the milk replacer and um, it's very important that it's made up at the right concentration and um, if you make it too strong or too weak that can cause a, an issue in the in the gut and cause diarrhea or if the foal is getting access to things that it shouldn't be eating and um, even you know early feeding of, of mom's food or um, excess feeding other things and we do see foals that occasionally take up um, eating things they definitely shouldn't eat such as shavings I've seen a foal with a really nasty diarrhea and impaction secondary to eating lots of shavings and very rarely we do see foals, um, just like a human babies that are lactose intolerant. Um, it's pretty rare, um, but we can, um, if we do find that is the cause, we can give something called lactose and we use the human product as well, um, which helps the foal digest, digest the milk more easily. Parasites are something else that we worry about. It's not so common in the kind of really young foals, but it is possible. And Strongyloides westeri is the one that we think about. And actually that actually gets transmitted from larvae in the milk directly into the foal. So migrates from the mare into the mammary glands and then into the milk. It does mainly affect the small intestine, but it does kind of be seen to cause diarrhea. And the treatment is the ivermectin wormers that um, we all use quite commonly. Um, Parascaris acorum, which is what we can see in this picture here, has these nice big white worms and um, ingest the eggs in the environment and they're um, very, they're very, they can 
stay for a long time in the environment, surviving over a winter, so if in, a, in a folding shed from one season to the next. The worms migrate via the lungs, so you can sometimes see them cough and ill thrift as the first sign. And then ultimately, if there's a big burden, they can block the small intestine, um, but diarrhea has also been noted. We have seen some concerns of resistance to wormers um, with this, this, um, this worm, so it's something that we, we do worry about a little bit. So as I mentioned sepsis um, earlier, that's obviously the leading cause of death in neonates and it's due to bacteria crossing into the blood, either via the gastrointestinal tract, which is obviously what happens when you have diarrhea or a damaged gut, or it can even cross the placenta or via the umbilicus. It can rapidly progress to what we call SIRS, which is a widespread inflammatory process in the body, uh, which suddenly leads to organ failure, septic shock and death. This sepsis generally occurs alongside other diseases, so it's something we worry about with foals with diarrhea or foals with pneumonia um, or foals um, that may be a maladjustment foals or other things going on with them. And the signs can be pretty non-specific um, along the kind of six foals lines of being, you know, not wanting to nurse, the mucous membranes, as Simon suggested earlier, looking at changing colour and looking more dark, um, or the foal, you know, laying down and not being very responsive. Rapid treatment for this is really very much necessary to save lives and we know by acting early we can improve, improve the outcomes for our foals. So I talked a bit about diagnosis. It's really important if we do have diarrhea in our foals to try and diagnose it and testing early is much easier once before we've given treatment to try and actually give a, a positive identification of what's going on. So the mainstay of the diarrhea is often fecal samples and we might send that away for PCR um, or looking for the toxins for clostridium, culturing things in house such as salmonella or doing the fecal egg counts for the parasites that I've discussed. We'll often look at their systemic blood work, so we're looking at their white blood cell count which is a marker of infection, their inflammatory markers such as SAA which you may have heard of and also measures of dehydration and how that foal is generally doing. We will measure the IgG, um, as Simon mentioned, obviously foals need their immunoglobulins to be able to fight infections and other problems. And we also measure their electrolytes, um, such as sodium, chloride, potassium, and bicarbonates. And we will often do a blood culture as well to detect if we're seeing sepsis in the blood. So what should you do at home if your foal develops diarrhea? So I think first thing to do is if you're noticing your foals change, the fecal consistency changing is to keep a really close eye on them. And these foals can change very quickly within just a matter of a couple of hours. So if you're not sure about your foal, ideally you need to come back and see it kind of in, within the next hour rather than leaving it for the evening check. We want to make sure that they're getting up and they're nursing. So you want to see them up and nursing pretty frequently from mum, not lying in the corner and looking a bit dejected. If you can, taking the temperature is really useful. And obviously a normal foal's temperature is between 37.5 and 38.8 degrees Celsius. And if you're getting temperatures above that, then that would be concerning that you've, you've potentially got an infection somewhere in this foal. Implement that biosecurity that I discussed about at the beginning. So it's never, never a wrong thing to do. And it may just um, save some big problems in the future. I'll discuss about skin skull disease animals, but keeping the legs and bottoms clean is something that's really important and you can do at home and make sure you're providing extra bedding if your foal is lying down. We don't want sores and things to occur. And ultimately, obviously, picking up the phone and giving one of your vets a call and just discussing what's going on with your foal. And they'll be able to help you and suggest if they, the foal needs to visit or what you might be able to do um, in the meantime. So obviously we'd like to treat these foals and hopefully make them better. And there's lots of things that we can do at home in the stable um, and in the field setting. And there are also things that really we need to be in the hospital to be able to achieve. So one of the big major problems with diarrhea is dehydration. So foals really rely on drinking huge volumes of milk to give them the nutrition and the fluids that they require. And if they're unable to nurse, they become dehydrated very quickly. Obviously diarrhea um, can, use, can lead to blood, blood, blood volume, but also anemia um, or blood loss um, can also can do that. And what can we do to help our foals? So we can encourage them to get up and nurse. So if your foal is sitting in the corner and it's not got up and nurse, go over and give it encouragement to see if you can help it get unstuck. We can give oral fluids, fluids via a feeding tube. Um, and often we'll see this, this little foal in the picture here at the bottom has got a feeding tube in, so it's being supplemented. Um, we can put on IV fluids um, and this can be intermittent boluses so you could potentially do that at home if sometimes we'll come out and see a foal and we'll just give them a litre of fluids and that actually makes them feel a lot better all of a sudden when they get back on suck and they don't need any further treatment 
or sometimes we need to give fluids more often um, and in a hospital setting we can give that via a, a, a pump that gives it continuously and we can also think about other types of fluids that we might need to give such as plasma or even a blood transfusion. So we can collect the, correct <laughs> the electrolyte disturbances. So these are really common um, with diarrhea. So they're losing lots of fluid by their diarrhea. And with that fluid, they lose a lot of the electrolytes that are really important in the body. Um, and we can supplement those either via an oral route and good old bicarbonate of soda is one that we often give our foals um, just via a syringe. Or we can maybe give IV electrolytes and often we're putting those in the fluids that the foal is receiving and, and really kind of balancing the books for them very accurately. And we have a machine here in the hospital called a blood gas machine, which allows us to um, know the electrolyte levels in the foal very accurately and correct those to ensure the foal is feeling as well as possible. It's amazing how by correcting the electrolyte disturbances, you can suddenly see a foal that's much more perky and bright than it was before. So skin scald, um, this is something that happens probably with every foal that really develops any sort of significant diarrhea because the back of the bottom and the legs gets very wet um, with the continual um, flow of diarrhea down the back legs. It's really important to mosh this off with a mild soap, dry really well, um, and then we can either apply Vaseline or baby oil two to three times a day to that area to try and avoid the, the, the wetness of the skin. Sometimes you will definitely get sores along there and once the diarrhea is improved, uh, applying something such as Flamazine can help protect the sores from, from getting infections. Here's a foal's bottom here that was in the hospital recently and had some, some, some scold definitely down the back of its legs, but enjoying its time with mum here. There are a couple of agents that we can use um, to try and kind of bind up the diarrhea and one that we use most commonly is called biosponge and um, which main ingredient is the smectite and that has been shown to bind the toxins that are produced in some types of the diarrhea and that's mainly the clostridium ones that um, can be used for other things. We give it orally two to three times a day and it comes either as a powder or a paste and either we give that via a tube or, or just into the mouth and that's something that we can often do at home as well. Pain relief, um, so it's important not to forget that some of these animals, these foals can be really pretty painful and uncomfortable with the diarrhea. And by making them feel more comfortable, they often get up and nurse more, which is what we would like to see. Um, we give, um, so the non steroidals such as meloxicam or filixin, but we need to be pretty careful about giving those if the foal is dehydrated as kidney damage can occur quite quickly. Um, so it's something that you should really discuss with your vet about before you're giving. Buscapan, um, something we often think about using for our adult colics, is actually very effective for spasms in foals as well. Um, and this foal here, we're having a nice little roll around, having a bit of colics and it's diarrhea, but giving it a dose of buscapan made it feel much better pretty quickly. I mentioned that infection is something that's very important and can have big problems with diarrhea. And I want to caveat that not all diarrhea requires antibiotics and actually it can actually cause more problems as well, um, and such as the Clostridium difficile. So we only use antibiotics when we think it's, it's necessary. Um, and that is something that again, we would use our clinical judgment and our diagnostic test to help us decide. Saying that obviously the early detection of sepsis um, the key to survival is implementing the antimicrobial therapy early on. So we can take samples to try and culture the bacteria. We can administer the appropriate antibiotics and we can examine the foal very frequently, especially when they're in the hospital for changes and act to kind of change those medications as we need. And we can also obviously potentially intervene if there are other signs of infection such as joint ill or a septic umbilicus. I mentioned about um, the plasma, giving um, plasma and hypoamine plasma, um, and that's something um, that we definitely do with our foals that have diarrhea. And there's two reasons for doing that. Uh, sick foals actually consume their immunoglobulin. So they might have started with an IgG in that green circle that Simon talked about. Um, but when they're sick, the IgG gets used up. They're fighting infections and their body is using the IgG to try and fight the infection. So this can often drop over a few days. So it's something we monitor very closely and we may supplement the plasma again. Foals with diarrhea, as they lose their electrolytes, they can also lose protein across the damaged gut. And the plasma is really important to help replace this and has some very positive benefits. So we can obviously test um, for the, the lack of them um, or the low IgG and we can administer the plasma in both the field and hospital settings. And that's our lab doing some nice testing for us. Um, hyperglycemia is a low blood glucose and foals 
well, that most illnesses can be very susceptible to low blood, blood glucose and this can actually be fatal. Um, so it's something that we do keep an eye on and we can monitor. Um, we've been monitoring the field setting as well. And we can supplement um, foals who maybe aren't taking in enough of their, their milk from their mum with glucose either in fluids or we can even replace their whole nutrition with something called um, parental nutrition if needed. And finally, for gastrointestinal protectants is something that we think about and want to obviously um, potentially use. And the one that we most commonly use is a drug called sulfate. And that basically performs, provides a projective gel that goes over the gastric mucosa. It's actually a human drug um, that's used for duodenal ulcers and foals are particularly prone to duodenal ulcers. So that's something that we worry about. So we often place our foals on that. And Meprazole is a drug that could be used in foals, but we do use it with caution as there has been some evidence that it can actually cause diarrhea in foals. So it's not something that I generally reach for straight away. Um, I prefer to use the sulfate, and there are a few other things as well. So I just wanted to briefly touch on when does a foal need hospitalisation and generally, you know, it'd be a big discussion between you and your vet somehow on when this might need to happen. But for me, there are a few key things. So if a foal is unable to stand, um, then it's definitely a marker for coming in. If they're unable to nurse, that's also another big, big marker or requiring intravenous fluids or nutrition. As I said, we can definitely give IV fluids out in the field and we can give boluses and um, do that. But sometimes, especially with these foals with lots of diarrhea, you really need to be giving it as a constant rate of fluids rather than boluses or giving it very often, which may um, become prohibitive for you having about five or six times a day. Foals that are in respiratory distress and um, showing signs of seizures um, are often ones that need to come into hospital post um, dystocia, so if they've had problems with foaling, sometimes those guys need some hospitalization. And I think um, ultimately, if they fail to improve to the treatment on the yard, so if you've done the things that you can in the yard, um, you've got things in place, but that foal is really just not getting as better as you'd like or as quickly, then it's something that maybe you need to think about coming in and spending some time in the hospital. So I just wanted to discuss on some outcomes as one of my final bits. So this is um, just to give you an idea about how how I might think about foals, and I haven't got a specific necessarily to the diarrhea, um, but there was a study from Florida um, in 2016, um, which showed that 80% of foals with neonatal encephalopathy, so those dummy foals survived to discharge. Um, and a study from Georgia in 2015, which looked at all their foals, um, so that was include, would include foals with diarrhea, and about 73% of those foals survived to discharge. We know that over the past few decades, foal care has improved significantly and we're much better at keeping neonatal foals alive and improving their outcomes. So unfortunately in the 1980s, I think I've got a graph here. This is one of my, this is one of my neonatal foals, my adjustment foals here um, back out in the field. This is a graph from this paper. And in 1980, only 26% of foals um, that presented um, survived discharge. By 2006, it improved to 57%, and now we're enough back in the 75% to 80%. So we're definitely getting better, um, and we know how to treat these foals well. Prognosis for athletic performance is considered to be good, and those foals that survive um, having sepsis generally perform similarly to age match controls. So they went on to do the, the same thing as their, their compatriots. There is no differences in sale prices identified between foals treated in hospitals and those controls. Um, and we now we do various things to try and predict outcome and give you guys an idea of how your foal might do. And one of those things is foal scores. So I can tell you from our foals from 2019, we had 46 foals who were admitted to our hospital. And um, that included a, a wide range of diseases, but that's including everything for the year. And 80% of those were alive to discharge. Um, unfortunately, seven of them were euthanized, but four of those out of the seven did not have any treatment due to financial constraints. So um, we're doing pretty well as well, and I think everyone is. So if you do have a sick foal, don't despair. Um, obviously, um, if you do think you need to come to hospital and it's discussed with your vet, then hopefully we can all achieve a, a good outcome for you. And I'll pass to questions. Um, clear and excellent presentation and we learned a lot uh, tonight um, we had a few questions uh, one question I thought very interesting myself as well is can oral plasma from a mare that um, has been vaccinated for rotavirus can you use that to protect your fall if her dam actually hasn't been vaccinated so could you supplement plasma with yeah. to your fall 
that's a good good question i think in theory then yes as in so we vaccinate our mares so that they have the appropriate antibodies in their colostrum that's then ingested by our foals um so you can't do that um i'm not sure you can't necessarily test the plasma to know that it's going to have the antibodies for, for rotavirus so um i think it would be a bit of an unknown entity obviously we do take plasma from other horses however there is a risk when we take plasma from mares that it's a more risk of a transfusion reaction so actually plasma that is made of high premium plasma or plasma that we collect is actually generally collected from gelding to reduce that risk. So that's the only issue with collecting it from a mare has been vaccinated for road virus, I would think. Okay. Um, and another question on road virus, because some people do have um, cattle on their farm as well. Can bovine um, road virus been transferred to, to horses? And I had the question several times with clients <laughs> as well, so that might be a good... Uh, I would believe not, but I think I'd actually have to look that up. I haven't heard of rotavirus and bovines transmitting into horse rotavirus, but I have to look it up. I don't know if anyone else in the room on the panel would know that. I don't know. No. I was hoping you would. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. I can look it up after I've finished and we can put it in the chat later. Um. And um, how would you, um, can you test if your horse is, uh, if your foal is actually lactose intolerant or is it more on a, on a, um, clinical. On a clinical sign and, and then you think, well, and just try, you have to signs and. Yeah, I didn't even accurately test um, for it, but I think it's more of a um, exclusion of other causes of problems. And then if you're, if you're replacing the lactase enzyme with, the supplement and you get a positive outcome and um, I think that would probably be the most common way for people to think about it but it is extremely rare for foals to truly be lactose intolerant. Thank you 